We've successfully created a working implementation of a connector that reads the latest exchange rates for a given currency, and it didn't take all that long. We just had to input some data from our API, make sure everything was in the correct place, and now we're successfully reading data. Oh, you thought we were done? Yeah, I, I, I thought we were. I was actually just about to head out for lunch. Nah, 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 nah. This one's gonna be a quick one, trust me. Dang, all right, fine, fine. It better be because Denny's closes in like 15 minutes. Oh, don't trip. That's plenty of time. In part two, we're gonna learn how to add incremental reads and tests to our new connector to finish out our low code connector tutorial. All right, let's get started. In the last part, we created a working implementation of a connector, but now we want to be able to read historical data instead of only reading the latest exchange rates. According to the API, we can read the exchange rate for a specific date by querying the slash exchange rates underscore data slash a specific date endpoint instead of the exchange rates data slash latest endpoint. So back in our code editor, let's head into our spec.yaml and actually add that key in so you noticed and remember from the last time we did this we had access key and base key but now what we want to do is we want to add the start underscore date key and since it's a required key that means you'll have to input this in order to actually pass the check operation for this specific connector so we added it up here we're also going to have to add it into our properties down here, the same as access key and base. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our start date key at the first line up here. And remember that spacing is very important here in YAML files. So make sure it's in line with the correct properties here. So we're gonna do start underscore date, and then its type is going to be of type string. Our description is going to be start getting data from this date. Our pattern here that we can set is going to be some form of regex. And let me go ahead and copy and paste this over. And then examples, so that way other users are going to be somewhat familiar with this, is going to be something like our year, our month, and our days. That way, when other people use your connector, they know how they should format their start dates when they input this in. We'll go ahead and save this, and then we'll head over to our secrets folder, and then in our config.json, we're gonna have to go ahead and add our start date in. So let's go ahead and add start underscore date. And then just for an example, let's go 2022-09-29, just for the sake of it. Go ahead and add our comma and save this. Now keep in mind, your start date should be seven days in the past. So that way we can go ahead and start grabbing historical data. So now we're gonna go back into our exchange underscore rates underscore API dot YAML file, where all of our stream definitions and the connector definition is located. We're gonna scroll down to our streams section down here. We're gonna change this path over here and have it accept the start date property that we just inputted in our config.json. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here and delete this. And right after the slash, I'm going to put two sets of curly braces and inside is going to be config. And we're gonna reach into the start underscore date key. And right here, we're going to set a default value of latest. The reason why we set latest to our default value is because when we run the check operation on our connector, it's not going to know what start date is. And so for that reason, we're going to set latest as our default value. Let me go ahead and save this, clear my terminal, and then go ahead and run the check operation against this connector now. And as you can see in our logs, we've successfully read data from the stream at that specific date right here, which I said was 2022-09-29. And this is all the data that's coming back from that specific date. Now that we see that this data is working, it's not exactly what we want it to do. We want to be able to iterate over all data from days between the start date and today or whenever the runtime is and then read them this can be accomplished by adding a date time stream slicer to the connector definition and then we update the path to point to the stream slices start date and don't worry i'll add a link in the description for more information on what stream slices are but anyways let's go ahead and go into our definitions and add that so we'll go to the top level definition up here and right in between the requester and the retriever property, this is where I'll add my stream underscore slicer. It's type 
if I can spell correctly, is going to be date time stream slicer. And now we add start underscore date time. Date time is going to be the following. So we'll add quotes, double curly brackets, and then we're gonna to point to the configuration start date like we did in our path. So we'll say config and then in square brackets, the start underscore date. If you remember up here in our API token, that's how we're passing our access key over to our authenticator. So effectively it is the same method that we're doing here to our stream slicer. Date time underscore format. And again, this is just going to be a format of what the date time should look like, which we've specified in the spec.yaml, but we're going to have to do it here in the connector definition, which is going to be percent Y percent lowercase m percent lowercase d. So now in our end date time, it's going to be the same format here, but now instead of pointing to our start date, we want to point it to today. And what we'll do here is we'll do the exact same curly brackets here, but instead of this, we're going to say now underscore local. I'm going to copy and paste the rest of this in here so I don't spend too much time on it, but then we'll explain exactly what we've added here. Okay, so I've added the date time format here for the end dates, and you can see that we've also added the time instead of just the date to our date time format. So that is obviously up to you on how you do that. We've also added a step here. The step will add as our cursor field so that way we know where we are when we iterate over each of these dates. And so effectively what the stream slicer will do is it will generate slices from the start time we entered into the connector, which we did in the config.json, until the end time, which should be today, where each slice is exactly one day. As I mentioned, the start time will be defined in the config.json, where our end time is defined by this now local macro, which ultimately evaluates to the current date at runtime, which for me is going to be October 4th, 2022. I'll leave another link in the description regarding string interpolation for more details. And as I mentioned before, we added this step property here with a cursor field. We'll go ahead and scroll down and inside of the options of the streams property, we'll go ahead and add the stream underscore cursor field and that point that to our date. So that way our stream can actually see this part of the connector definition. And we'll also need to go down into our retriever property. Make sure you're in the retriever property that is located in the definitions prop and not the retriever found in the stream definition. We'll go down to retriever. And after the paginator, we're going to add stream underscore slicer. And for its ref value, we're going to point it over to definitions.stream slicer. Go ahead and save that. And that way our connector can actually use the stream slicer. Finally, we'll need to actually update our path here. And instead of saying config, we want to point to the stream slicers start date. So instead we're going to say stream slice start date or latest. So we'll go ahead and save that. So now I'm going to go ahead and run a read operation on this connector. And as you can see, I've read six records from the rates stream successfully. So we've read more than just one record, meaning we've read data from different dates. Now, what we want to do is to be able to add support for incremental sync. Instead of reading data for all dates, we would like the connector to only read data for the dates we have not read yet. We can set this by going into the configured underscore catalog JSON file inside of our integration test directory and then here we see full refresh. What we're going to do is going to add a comma and then we're going to add incremental into that array and then save that. It's actually added a state message in the records metadata, which is seen right here. The date instead of start date should have been replaced with your current date that you ran this command, which for me today, like I said, is October 4th. So you can see that it is successfully added here. Now, if you want to simulate state on this connector, what we can do is go to sample underscore state dot JSON. We're going to replace this and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in. So this is going to be the race object with date. Instead of 715, I'm going to set this to 09 uh, and let's just set it to 29 again. Actually, let's just set it to 28 since we already set it to 29 just so we can see the difference. We also need to set this to incremental. And then if we run our read operation again here, 
Now you can see after we ran this that it's outputting a state message of setting state of rate stream to date 2022-09-28, which is what I set our sample state to here. And so just for example's sake, if we set this to 1004, we should see zero records read since it is today's date. So now you can see read zero records from rate stream since today's date is ran. We're not getting any data back since we've already read it. Now let's quickly add some tests to make sure that the connector respects the Airbyte specifications before we start using this in production. We can do this by executing the source acceptance tests. These will make sure that the most basic functionalities work as expected and are configured in the acceptance test config.yaml file, as you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here into our integration test directory again. And inside of our invalid config.json, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this inside, which is going to be uh, similar to our actual configured catalog. But instead, we're going to throw in an invalid access key to make sure that our check operation is working as is and will not authenticate to the API without a valid key. We're also going to head over to our abnormal state.json, going to get rid of everything inside. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to set this to an abnormal date here. Since it's too far ahead in the future, this should not work. But we have to make sure that that is true in this instance with these tests. Now, let me go ahead and clear my terminal real quick. So in order to run these acceptance tests, you can go ahead and copy and paste the command found in the docs to run these. And once these go through, you can see whether that these abnormal states or the sample state JSON files are allowing the connector to authenticate or not. And once you have these tests in place, now your connector is finished and ready for production use. And that's going to do it for this series. If you want to run this connector for yourself, you can go ahead and click the link in the description, which is going to point to this GitHub repo with the connector we've built in this video. You can go ahead and fork it, clone it to your local machine, and then go ahead and run it the same way we always do using Docker Compose up. And then you should be off to the races with the connector we've built here. And you can see it in real time in the localhost port 8000 UI. Otherwise, you can go ahead and follow both parts one and two of the series and create one for yourself and then go ahead and run Airbyte using Docker Compose up. Like I said, spin up all the containers and then you can see your connector live in the UI and then try it out. Now, after watching both these parts, you should be well on your way to creating your very own connector in literally minutes. I hope these helped. And please, if you have any questions, please reach out to us in our community Slack, which will also be linked in the description if you want to join us and talk to us in the community. But otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.